Module 6, Lesson 8, Variability in a Data Distribution. I can mathematically find the mean of a given data set, which is what we worked on in Lesson 6.5. I can explain that the mean of a data set is a typical value. So when we find the mean, what we're trying to do is find a way to say this is what is typical or kind of normal for the data set. I can use the center and the spread to describe a data set. When we talk about the center right now, we've looked at the mean. I can show and explain that the precision of the mean depends on the spread of the data set. So in other words, trying to decide if the mean is a good description based off of how spread out the data is. So we're looking at steps three and four. We're summarizing the data and we are going to answer questions that can be answered by data. All right, comparing two data distributions. So Robert's family is planning to move to either New York City or San Francisco. Robert has a cousin in San Francisco and asked her how she likes living in a climate as warm as San Francisco. She replied that it doesn't get very warm in San Francisco. He was surprised by her answer. Because temperature was one of the criteria he was going to use to form his opinion about where to move, he decided to investigate the temperature distributions for New York City and San Francisco. The table below gives average temperatures for each month for the two cities. So Robert's getting ready to move and he's trying to decide, do I do San Francisco, do I do New York, and he's concerned about what are the temperatures. So he has collected this information and what he has here are the average temperatures for each month for the two cities. So he took all of the temperatures for January, added them together, divided by 31 days, and came up with that temperature. And he's got the same going on for all 12 months, January, February, March, April, all the way through December. So this would be a good time to pause for a moment and take a look at the data and just ask yourself, is there anything you notice? Is there anything that stands out to you? Is there anything you're like, oh, that's interesting? So go ahead, pause, and think about that for a second. All right, so what are some of the things that you notice about the temperatures in New York City? Well, as I was looking at it, I noticed that we start out kind of cold there at about 40 degrees, and the temperatures increase clear up into July and August, which is kind of our peak there, and then we start going down again. So I notice that we get pretty cold all the way up to pretty warm. In other words, there's a lot of variation, a lot of variability, a lot of change in the temperature throughout the year in New York City. What did you notice when you looked at San Francisco? Well, San Francisco, it didn't get cold and then all of a sudden get warm and then cool off again. They looked, to me, when I looked at them, pretty similar. Not a lot of change in the temperature in San Francisco. The average monthly temperatures don't change a lot from month to month. Very little variability, very little change. So using a calculator, find the mean of the monthly average temperatures for each city. So you would want to pause here and get out your calculator. Remember you're going to add together all of the numbers and you will be dividing by 12. So I'll add up everything for New York City and divide by 12. And then I'll add up everything for San Francisco and I will divide by 12. So go ahead and pause the video and find the mean of the monthly average temperatures. And when you're ready, unpause. And hopefully what you found is that New York City is about 63 degrees 
and that San Francisco is about 64 degrees. Now you should pause here for a second and ask yourself does that surprise you? Because New York City goes from this cold all the way up into the warm and then it goes back down to the cold. And then San Francisco just kind of stays the same. So are you surprised that they have temperatures that are so close together? So Robert is trying to decide where he wants to move. And he comes to you, his very good friend, and he says, based off of what you're seeing here, where should I move? So pause for a moment and think about the advice that you would give Robert and go ahead and write that advice down to him. And of course you want to be able to justify your advice. What is your reason for that advice? Well, the means are almost the same. So really it looks like Robert could move to either city. If all we do is compare the mean of these two cities, yeah, it's all the same. It really wouldn't make much difference if we use the means to compare. And so the question is, what else could we look at? So we've looked at the measure of center, which is the mean. Now let's take a look at the variability. How much change is there in the data? So maybe Robert should look at how spread out the New York City monthly temperature data are from the mean of the New York City monthly temperatures and how spread out the San Francisco monthly temperature data are from the mean of the San Francisco monthly temperatures. So we're going to compare and say how spread out is the data from the mean? How much change is there from the mean? So to compare the variability of monthly temperatures between the cities, it may be helpful to look at a dot plot. So here we have the dot plot for New York City, and here we have the dot plot for San Francisco, and we want to start looking at the data on these dot plots and compare that data with the mean. So how are the two dot plots different? Well, the temperatures for New York City are really spread out. We're clear here, over to clear, over here. Wow! Very spread out. San Francisco, the dot plot has a 40 at the bottom and an 85 at the top, but all of the data is in this little tiny section in the middle. Now what we want to do is we want to mark the location of the mean on each distribution we're going to use a little balancing symbol and how do the two distributions compare based on their means so we're going to add this little triangular symbol for the mean so for New York we're gonna come in here to 63 degrees and we're gonna put this little balancing symbol in here and for San Francisco we're going to come in here and put in this little balancing symbol at 64 degrees now when we look at the means, the means are about the same. But what about the variability when we look at New York City? Well, when we go to the left, wow, we were at 63 degrees all the way down to 39 degrees. We're going 24 degrees to the left of the mean and we're at 63 degrees and we're coming all the way up to 85 degrees so we've got 24 degrees on this side we've got 22 degrees on this side we are very far away from the mean temperature when we talk about the variability here so the temperatures are spread out around the mean and I actually quantified that. I actually counted and said, how far from we? How far from the mean are we? The temperatures range from a low of around 39 to a high of 85. So I could actually take 85 and subtract 39. And I could say that the temperatures are going to range 46 degrees. The average temperatures in New York City range 46 degrees. There is a variability of 46 degrees there. 
Well, if we look at San Francisco, what do we have going on here? Well, San Francisco, we're at 64 degrees as the center, and we're going up to 70 degrees. We've got 6 degrees there. We've got 64 degrees, and we're going down to, how much is that? Is that 56, 57, 57 there? 55, it'd get 57. It doesn't vary very much. We have a total range of 13 degrees. We've got 7 degrees on this side. We've got 6 degrees on this side. We have a total range of 13 degrees compared on the last one to a number that was clear up in the 40s. Huge variability. So the temperatures are clustered around the mean. They're close to it. We go from 57 to 70. So comparing the two variabilities in the distributions, is the variability about the same or is it different? How much change do we have in temperature over here compared to how much change in temperature over here? Well, number one, they do not have the same variability. Is the variability about the same or is it different? Oh, it's different. Oh, it's, it's definitely different. Which one has more variability? Well, New York. Going from 85 down to 39. Oh my gosh, huge variability. Compared to over here where we're only going 57 to 70. So the variability is different. The variability in New York City is much greater than the variability in San Francisco. It's almost three times greater. So a whole lot more variability in New York City than we're getting in San Francisco. So if Robert prefers to choose the city where the temperatures vary the least from month to month, which city should he choose and why? So you would pause, you'd think about that, you'd write that down, and then you compare your thinking with mine. Well, if he wants less variability, if he wants the least amount of variability between these two cities, San Francisco's the place. He's only got 13 degrees of variability in here. Compared to over here, what do we come up with? Like 46 degrees of variability? So let's see, 13 degrees compared to 46 degrees. Well, shucks. 40, yeah, way less variability. We're not going to New York if we're Robert. So now we're going to put this together. We're going to consider the mean and the variability in a data distribution. We're going to put these two pieces together. So the mean is used to describe a typical value for the entire data distribution. Kind of the typical, what is the middle? Sabina asks Robert which city he thinks has a better climate. Now how do you think Robert responds to that question? Pause and think about that for a second. How would you describe that, this weighing of the better climate. Well, Robert can give a two-part answer. He can say, well, you know, they both have about the same mean temperature, the same average temperature. But then he can also say that the mean temperature is a better measure of the climate in San Francisco than it is a measure of the climate in New York City because it changes less. So let me say that again. He can say, you know what, they both got about the same average temperature. However, the mean temperature in San Francisco better describes the climate because it doesn't change as much. The data around the mean temperature of San Francisco has less variability. So we used the mean and we explained the meaning of the mean by talking about the variability. Sabine is confused. She's like, whoa, what do you mean? That's confusing. So how could Robert explain what he means? Pause and think about that for a second. 
Well, he could say, you know, the temperatures in New York City, they get clear down into the 40s in the winter months, and they go clear up to the 80s in the summer months. So 63 isn't very close to the temperatures. Therefore, the mean is not a good indicator of the typical monthly temperature. When we say the mean temperature in New York City is 63, it gives this idea that 63 degrees is the temp typical temperature in New York. We don't expect it to be very much different from that. But when we look at the data, we see that it's very different from that. So the mean is a much better indicator of the temperature in San Francisco because the variability of the temperatures there is much smaller. The data is closer to the mean. So let's look again at the two dot plots and understand what Robert said. Which dot plot has greater variability? Well, we've already said that New York City has greater variability, and we've already said that San Francisco has less variability. When we take a look a little bit deeper here, let's see, I already answered that question. So looking at New York, here's our bottom data point, here's our top data point, and we're kind of spread out all through them. Here's our top data point, here's our bottom data point, and our data points are very close together. So if data points have a lot of variability, is the mean, this middle point, that we came up with, this 63 degrees, is that a good description of what is typical within the data set? And the answer is, no, it's not. When we say 63, we're giving the idea that the data is going to be close to 63. Well, that is certainly not the case. We are spread out a long ways. So if there's a lot of variability, the mean is not a good indicator of a typical value in the data set. If the data points are tightly clustered around the mean, if they're close in, the mean is a good description of a typical value. So here we've got two distributions of times it takes six students to get to school in the morning and to go home from school in the afternoon. So we've got in the morning it takes a student 11 minutes, 12, another student 12, 114, 114, another 16, another 17. Afternoon, same students, we've got 6 minutes, 10 minutes, 13 minutes, 18, 18, and 19. So to visualize the means and variabilities, go ahead and draw a dot plot. And I've already got one up here. Now looking at this data, which one of these would the mean be a better description? So what is the mean time to get home from school in the morning for the six students? To get from home, to get home from school, to get, uh, that should be from home, to school in the morning for the six students. So what is the mean for the morning? So add them all together and divide. And we find out that the mean is 14 minutes. And what about the afternoon? So add all of these together and divide them. And we find out that the mean is 14 minutes. I'm going to double check in the answer key here because I feel like something's not quite right here, but I could be wrong. Yeah, they both have a mean of 14 minutes. So they both have a mean of 14 minutes. So the question becomes, in which of these situations then is the mean the better description? So for which distribution, for the morning or for the afternoon, does the mean of 14 minutes better describe a typical amount of time that it takes a student to get to school or get home from school? Where is 14 the better measure? 
Well, 10, 12, 14. So here's a balancing point. Here's a balancing point. Well, let me see. As I look at these two pieces of data, I kind of vary from 11 up to 17 here. Here I go from 6 all the way up to 19. Look at these huge gaps that exist in the data. Over here, things are close together. Hmm. So which distribution does 14 minutes better describe? Well, hopefully you're saying it better describes the morning. The morning mean is a more accurate indicator. The spread in the afternoon data is far, far greater. Wow, look how spread out that is. So the mean, although it is the average, is not a very good description of the entire data set. All right, so taking a look here, we've got um, the number of green jelly beans and seven bags of jelly beans from each of the five different candy manufacturers. So we have five people who make candy and we are counting the number of green jelly beans. So each of these numbers are the green jelly beans and for each manufacturer we looked at five of their bags. Now in each one of these the average is 42. The question is for which of these five manufacturers is the mean of 42 a better description of how many green jelly beans you would find in their bags? Well, here is a dot plot of each one of them. And we're going to look here and we're going to add our little balancing point at the mean. Now looking at these four dot plots, in which situation is 42 the best measure of the center? And what we're going to do is we're going to put them in order from the one that we think has the least variability to the one with the most variability. So which one changes the least to the, which one, to the one that changes the most? Now as I look at these and kind of look at the spread of the data, it looks to me like the all good has its data really close together. So I think that it has the least variability. Now I look at the other three that I have here and this one here the best, it looks way spread out, way spread out, which leaves me with two more. Now between the delight and the sweet, this one looks like it's a little bit closer together, so it's going to have less variability, and delight has a little bit more variability. Now something I want to point out very quickly as we look at these dot plots, notice that every one of them starts at 20 and ends at 65. Don't get fooled by graphs and charts that change the size. It would be very different if we started this one out at zero and it went to 650. So don't get fooled by charts that make comparisons but the charts are drawn differently. They did a nice job on these. They had the same minimum, they had the same maximum. They had the same count buys as they went across. So we've got the all good has the least variability. We have the sweet that has the second least variability. We have delight and we have best, which is of course what we had already written down. So looking at this, which would the mean be considered a better indicator of a typical value? Which one is the number 42, the mean of 42, going to best describe how many green jelly beans you would find in a bag of jelly beans? Well, all good. 
would be the best indicator of a typical value for the distribution. All good, the mean of 42 best represents how many green jelly beans you would find. All right, so looking at the closing here, how does variability help determine if the mean is an accurate indication of a typical value? So the mean of a distribution, the average, of a distribution of a data set that has a small amount of change, not very spread out, is considered to be a better indicator, a better way of describing a data set than the mean of a distribution with greater variability. The less spread out the data, the better the information we get from the mean. I keep saying that over and over again a whole bunch of different ways. The less spread out the data, the better the information that we get from the mean. So in summary, we can compare distributions based on their mean. So we can compare different data sets and say what is their average but we must also take a look at the variability, how much change is there in the data set. The mean of a distribution with small variability, so if we look at the mean of a data set and there's not very much change, that mean is going to be a better description than the mean of a data set that has greater variability. So that concludes Module 6, Lesson 8. Um, kind of cool to take a step beyond just looking at the mean. Emphasizing again, we need to look at the mean, yes, but we also want to take the next step and ask how much variability is there in the data set. So once again, concluding Module 6, Lesson 8, make sure you complete your problem set, and if you've got questions, ask for help.